Welcome to Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Shelby Kluver. It's semifinal Saturday here in St. Louis, and for the first time ever in Arch history, the first and second seeded teams aren't playing today. We'll have all the coverage on today's games, plus a behind the scenes look at what it's like to be in media here at Arch Madness. For those stories and more, stay tuned for today's episode of Rambler Sports Locker. Welcome back to RSL, I'm Matt Mason. I'm here with Amelia Ickes, who was courtside for the Drake and Bradley game. And what went down in that game, Amelia? Yeah, so today was the semifinals uh, between number four seed Bradley and number eight seed Drake. Um, Drake uh, Bradley actually got a really early run, which put them in front for good. So once they got the lead, they kind of held it for the rest of the game. And there was a second half rally from uh, Drake where they had, uh, they went on a 10 and zero scoring run uh, to pull um, within three points of Bradley, but they weren't able to uh, take the victory and Bradley ran home with it. Mm. Were there any standout performances for the game? Yeah, definitely. Um, on Bradley's side, uh, number five, Daryl Brown, he's their senior guard. He actually had 25 points during the entire game and four assists. Um, he's definitely their star player for sure. He's been having a good tournament. Yeah, definitely. You got any predictions for tomorrow's championship? As much as, as a Loyola fan, I'd love um, to see Bradley not win again because they took us last year. Um, I actually really do think that Bradley will take it just because of Daryl Brown's star power on the court. He actually brought in 19 of those 25 points in the first half, so he's essential to helping them um, get that early lead. Um, so I think that he's really important and he will help them pull through tomorrow. Thank you so much, Amelia. Uh, Shelby Kluver was at the press conference after the game. We're going to send it down to her for some more. Thanks, Matt. I'm Shelby Kluver, and I'm here courtside as the second semifinal game kicks off here in St. Louis. While I am disappointed it's not Loyola playing, we've still seen some great stuff here at Arch today. Like the last game, where the Bradley Braves were victorious over the Drake Bulldogs. With that win, Bradley goes to back-to-back -back championship games for the first time in program history. They're trying to become the ninth Missouri Valley Conference team to be repeat champions. In the post-game press conference, head coach Brian Wardle said that today's win was a tough-fought one and that it took the whole team to accomplish it. On the topic of Elijah Child's first half technical foul, coach said that, quote, Elijah is a passionate player and you don't want to take that away from him. He also said that Elijah was able to calm down more in the second half and rely on the defense to push him forward. And senior Daryl Brown, who's been so crucial to the Bradley team all year long, says that this moment was one the guys have been preparing for since this summer. He said the seniors were able to stay calm, the younger guys followed, and the rest all fell into place. And now, he says, they just have to win one more. Bradley will play again tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the championship game. And Matt, before I toss it back to you, we have to go to Connor quick for a quick word on the unsung hero of the Arch Conference Tournament. Connor? Hi, I'm Connor Bergen reporting from the Media Workroom Snack Table in the Enterprise Center. And here at RSL, people always ask us, what's our secret? How do we put out such great content? Is it our great friends and family back home cheering us on? That Rambler pride? Or our love for sports and journalism? Nah. Those all come secondary to the delicious, chocolatey, and milky taste of milk snacks from Prairie Farms. You know, and this isn't even a, an endorsement or a sponsorship. I just have had about four dozen of these since the tournament began, and I love them. So while there's a lot of stars at Arch Madness, don't forget about the humble star of Milk Snacks. Matt, back to you. I have to agree, Milk Snacks have really been getting us through. Connor was also downstairs interviewing some Bradley fans about their team's seniors. Let's send it back to him for more. This year's Arch Madness Tournament will be the final Missouri Valley Conference games for Bradley seniors Daryl Brown and Nate Cannell. Last week, Brown was named second team all-conference for the second year in a row. It's nothing new for Brown, though, who's led the team in scoring since his freshman year. I mean, this is the kind of kid that's a leader, a natural leader, and uh, he, he knows how to make the big play when, uh, when they need it. They count on him. Cannell was named third team all-conference and last March took home MVC's sixth man of the year. He's a crowd favorite for his three-point shooting and hometown ties. Sure. You know, everybody's got a soft spot in their heart for Nate, you know, just being the local boy. I mean, and when he's on with those threes, man, it's just magic. Cannell and Brown are a big reason why Bradley has made it to back-to-back -back conference title games for the first time in school history. I think both of those guys add so much to what we have going and why we're here and, why we, and the season we've had. You know, both of them has, have brought back excitement to Bradley basketball. Fans are hoping the duel will punch one last ticket to the big dance before they say goodbye. 
For RSL, I'm Connor Bergen. I'm here with Eric Moran, who was on the sidelines for the second game this Saturday of Arch Madness. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened in that game? So the uh, Valparaiso Crusaders defeated the Missouri State Bears by a score of 89 to 82. If you look at the stat sheet, the stats between the two teams were really similar. They both shot for around 48% from field goal range. I think what really did it for the Crusaders was that Around there, towards the end of the game, there was a five-minute stretch where the Bears did not s score from field goal range at all. So if you're not making your shots, it's really hard for you to get back back in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Was there any standout performances for you in this game? So I would say Javon Freeman Liberty uh, for the Crusaders. He had a big game. Uh, he scored 29 points and nine rebounds, so he prevented any chance for the Bears to come back. Wow. Heck of a performance for sure. You got any predictions for uh, tomorrow's championship matchup? So I would say probably uh, I, I like the I like the Crusaders um, over Bradley because of their offense. They scored 89 points today, which is just an insane amount of points, especially for college basketball. So I, I see them having the edge. Without a doubt, it's going to be a great matchup for Arch Madness Championship tomorrow. We're going to send it down to the sideline where Rebecca was at the press conference and has more. Rebecca Vandevener reporting from the Enterprise Center after the post-game press conference with Valparaiso. After your difficulty last night, Javon Freeman Liberty bounced back today, saying that yesterday's game was completely out of his mind. Coach Matt Lodick said that Javon is an all-conference guard and played like it tonight. Joking around that this is like an AAU high school tournament, John Kaiser said that he wished for more legs underneath them, but he's ready for their fourth game in four days. They developed the motto, They're, they are one boat and one team, during their preseason rafting trip. And John Kaiser said that they've taken that motto and sailed with it. They're going to take that and sail with it all the way to the championship game tomorrow against Bradley for their first MVC championship game. For Rambler Sports Locker, Rebecca Vandvener. Thanks, Rebecca, for that insight. RSL reporter Shelby Kluver has been behind the scenes today with RSL to show you what really goes down in making these videos. Hi guys, I'm Shelby Kluver. We're here on semifinal Saturday in St. Louis, and we thought, what better way to bring you guys into our world than showing you what it looks like to be media here at Arch Madness. So, I've got my press pass, I've got a journalist best friend, and let's go have a look around. All right, first up, we're up here in the sky deck, which is the fourth floor, it's the highest place in the Enterprise Center. It's usually where the VIPs get to watch all the Blues games, but this weekend, it's for us. If you look over here, you'll be able to see what an incredible view we have when we sit up here while we're editing our packages. This is where we keep all of our stuff while we're working busy during the day. It's also where Connor keeps all of his milk snacks. But where do we go when we are working? Let's go check it out. Turning the corner here, you will find the world's slowest elevator. It's the freight elevator, so it's not usually open to the public. It's open to workers and the media, which is how we are able to get around during the games. <laughs> oh, our riot is here. And here's Professor Brown. If I don't look good, you can't use the stage. <laughs> We're going to go down to the third floor. Are you getting off? Yes. <laughs> Well, we're going to go down to the third floor, which is where we're able to film our, all of our highlights. And just as a little fun fact, this freight elevator is where the Rambler Sports crew got stuck two years ago. It wasn't me, and hopefully it won't be me this year either. All right, once we get off of the elevator at the third floor and we walk through this deserted hallway, we get to the Magic Portal 51. This is where we're able to film all of our highlights for the games. Usually fans aren't allowed up in here. And fun fact, the only reason that we were allowed to film here either is because the very first day of Arch Madness this year, we ran into one of the guys who helps film the entire like Blues Nation um, media packages. So remember kids, networking is so important. Let's go check it out. As you can see, Matt is super hard at work right now filming all of our highlights for us in this game. Hi Matt. 
the view from this place right here. Just like upstairs is a great skyline view of all the game and all the action happening here at Arch. All right, let's keep going. Turning the corner back into the freight elevator, we're gonna bypass the second and first floors. There's nothing super special there. But the real secret is, is in the basement. Now, fans normally aren't allowed there, but the media gets to go down there, and that's where we have all of our special stuff. Let's go figure it out. <gasps> Look who's joining us here, waiting for the elevator. <laughs> None honor than Rambler Sports Locker contributor, Matt Mason. Going to get some coffee. He's gonna go get some coffee. Are you coming with us? Are you going down? Yeah, we're going down. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, this would be a great time to show off. It takes, it takes a, <laughs> it takes a village here at Rambler Sports Locker. Here is my lovely camera person today. Here's Connor. It was me the whole time. <laughs> <Later>. <laughs> yeah, it's my handiwork. Who would have thought? All right, now that we finally arrived at the bottom floor. Once you step out of the elevator, it's kind of a maze to get anywhere else. Let's lead you through it. Here is one of the tunnels that the players, coaches, anybody who's down in the baseline, the band members, the cheerleaders, the dancers, can all walk through. Through those curtains is the promised land, the court. But over here is our favorite place, it's where all the food and snacks and drinks are for the media people. Up in here is the media workroom. This is where we're able to have lunch, eat supper, talk with, talk, with, talk with each other, and get a lot of our editing done. And just over there is the press conference room, where we go to post-game interviews with the players and the coaches. And that, my friends, is just about it for our tour of the behind-the-scenes look of what it's like to be in the media reporting at Arch Madness. Stay tuned for all of our coverage today and tomorrow for the championship game. For Rainbow Sports Soccer, I'm Shelby Kluber. Thanks, Shelby, for that behind-the-scenes look. That's it for us today. Join us tomorrow for the championship matchup of this Arch Madness tournament. I'm Matt Mason from the Rambler Sports Locker.